podcast for skaters is brought to you in part by Sonic Sports. Sonic Sports carries multi-tools for inline skating, aggressive wax, inline hockey pucks, and more. Sonic Sports really is a valuable supporter of Pinto Pony Productions, what I do here. Sonic Sports LA on Instagram, sonicsports.com on the World Wide Web. Let's talk about today's skate session right away. When I go out to practice, I quite often have objectives. Sometimes I put them on my phone as far as an order of things I want to get done in my skate session. When I go out on the streets, I generally only have a destination in mind. Maybe there's obstacles I'm thinking of, but most of the time I'm just thinking I'm going to skate there and zigzag my way back and see what I can find. Today I went out with three objectives and I wrote these three objectives on the board behind me. The first one I wrote down was speed management because I knew I was going to a place with a lot of inclines and I have a tendency to bomb these inclines. So on those times that I do need a slalom style slowing down kind of movement back and forth on a wide road, I don't necessarily have it equalized both sides. So today I want to do that slalom, take my time going down inclines, enjoy the movement and possibly slalom it out from side to side a little more equally. My number two objective was discovery, and that's what rollerblading's all about. I have, however, in the past been guilty of rolling the same train over and over again, having some familiar routes, knowing what's coming up next. When you're putting together a really fast line and you want things to string together nicely, familiarity really does help. When I'm skating in unfamiliar areas, corridors that I'm not familiar with, I worry a lot about surfaces and people, traffic, objects that I don't see. Am I going to be skating through like a a plate glass window or something when I'm in the underground path? That's what haunts me there. Up here, it's more like who's going to dart out from which corridor, which buildings have exits and entrances that are busier than I would imagine. And sometimes I worry about dead ends, which I shouldn't really worry about dead ends because I'm on damn wheels. I can just roll back out. But yes, I love exploring and I love it when a corridor actually links up to something useful and today that happened. Today I found the Great Southwest Passage of Toronto which brought me from my area on Queen Street West through a series of alleys, well off King Street West, through a series of alleys south west towards the Bent Way. Um, There was like a parking lot that strung up at the end of it and got me halfway to the Bent Way without having to see very many people at all or skate with traffic so That was perfect for my last point, and that's obscurity. Sometimes I just don't want to be seen when I skate, and today was one of those days. I enjoy myself more when I don't have other people to consider, unless it's other skaters. I do get a fair amount of encouragement from people here in Toronto, but there's also the other side of it. So I just wanted to skate with my head down, enjoy the city, make some discoveries, remain obscure, and do the side-to-side slalom when I got to the incline, which I did manage to hit, but not much. But I made a little progress. So yeah, I'm trying not to get in the way of Slobies today and have Slobies get in the way of me. And I succeeded in that as well. So it was a real win all the way around this session was. On my last podcast for skaters, I touched on some cultural aspects of inline. Right now, inline is in its pre-trending phase. I'm always incensed by how many people are actually skating versus how television and cinema have effectively written it out of existence. Imagine if your experience of city skating was represented not as a joke or a punchline but in a movie or a Netflix series. Something that portrayed it as the beautiful motion journey or social collaboration that it is. I mean, everyone who ever learns how to skate decently falls in love with it. So it can't be that inline skating isn't fun. It must be that perhaps current culture is losing its sense of fun. Just a possibility. I mean, there's no money to be had in it, so there's no idol of somebody who's a baller in rollerblading. That would probably change everything. So... I do accept it as a reality that inline will blow up only when the right combination of celebrities Instagram their skates. It's what it takes these days. I'm fine with that. It's more relevant than the choices being made by this World Fashion Council in some skyscraper boardroom. It's still ironic to me that 
people like my age or older are the ones who decide what's cool for youth culture. It's weird. Drake was out on Blades last year. Hockey skates, too. I think they were Bowers, maybe Mission. But something familiar to me. I bet Bieber can skate. He can play hockey very well, I, th I think. I tell you, if he thinks he's found God already, wait until he gets eight wheels on his feet. He's got no idea. He'll have his come to Jesus moment, that's for sure. What if The Rock could skate? Imagine Dwayne Johnson ripping through Toronto at 40 kilometers per hour. I think he'd be cut off less than me. Toronto might just be a little more polite to him. Just a theory. Maybe I should gain 100 pounds. I know The Rock. Or rather, I did, kind of. I managed a health club once where famous people came to town and the studios would contact me or the owners and I would show their security, the club, and then make sure each client had a hospitable experience, a enjoyable time at the third space. There's home, there's work, and then there's your third space. So it turns out I hate Dwayne Johnson because he's just so damn nice. He came in daily for a few weeks and treated everyone who greeted him like a long-lost brother. Who does that? So of course I'm joking about the hate part. The only time I saw him less than jocular was when he had 90 pounds strapped around his waist, was about to hit some pull-ups, and a fan approached him. Even then, he took his headphones out patiently and gave the fan some kindness. Once I saw Gina Gershon walking up our metal staircase and I turned to a receptionist and said, don't you just want to push her down the stairs? The girl's like, why would you say such a thing? Not in that accent. I explained to her the plot of Showgirls and told her she didn't really need to see it, except for the zany pool sex. That's good for a laugh. Yeah, that's really funny. So here's a semi-angry gripe. I'm going to fit it in somewhere, I'm not sure where. How the fuck is skateboarding considered street? when I never see these guys riding on the streets or in the alleys. Sure, they do their little spots, their parks. And on the rare occasion that I do see a guy not carrying his lumber down the street, actually riding it, I imagine they're on their way to a spot full of dudes flipping their boards over, clacking and clattering in the hot sun. Yeah, it looks like fun. Inline skating is the most street sport on the planet. We roll roads, streets, lanes, alleys, and trails like no other sport. Our inner city permeation is unrivaled. So yeah, skateboarding wins Miss Popularity for sure. The ultimate pop sport. But it's only a street sport in photographs and Thrasher's limited imagination. The truth. Let's go on to really important things. I've been struggling with a very pressing question which maybe you guys can help me with. I've been trying to figure out which animal best represents the inline skater. I've been through a bunch of beasts. One obvious one is the jaguar, but that's too typical. They're antisocial anyways. So of course I go to the wolf, but that's not as fluid as the jaguar. The wolf pack I like though, for a group of skaters. And, oh yeah. The Jack Russell Terrier, I can't sign off on that one either because their beauty, ferocity, and agility are unrivaled in the known universe. And you all know I am not prone to hyperbole. So I can't call myself a Jack Russell skater. That would be about 10 times too braggadocious. After watching the various bird species in my city, one flyer stands out among them all. That's the seagull. You'd think it would be the hawks, but I've been watching the hawks trying to catch and eat the pigeons lately, and I've got to say, hawks suck at the flying. They lumber to a high point, work way too hard to get up there, circle, catch their breath, I imagine. They pretend they're looking for stuff when they're up there, but they're like, oh shit, man, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm going to have a heart attack. But yeah, they lumber to that high point, and then when they catch their breath, they plummet down like rockets. It's very impressive. But after they lose this momentum, they can't catch shit. Even the little birds will fly around a hawk and peck at him as he works his ass off for every yard he covers. 
The Hawks to me are like ski jumpers or crashed ice skaters. Definitely downhill athletes. The pigeons kind of suck too. Their flaps are blunt and ineloquent. Choppy. Good enough to turn them into little meat missiles, but their movement and cornering, yeah, they're kind of like the bicycles of birds, like 10 speeds. The seagulls, however, fly with efficient ease and unrivaled agility. I didn't know this until I moved to downtown Toronto. When the seagulls roll in among the other birds, it's like, oh shit, that's what freedom is. Those other guys are just like flapping away. They can climb quickly, reverse direction almost instantly, and are so fast on the straightaway. I've seen some that will just hover in the same spot for like 30 minutes. They adjust their wings against the wind and just shift back and forth or up and down as if practicing. They're the only birds in Toronto skies I've ever seen legit playing. The rest seem like they're all just ruthless little eating machines. Nasty little organisms. So yeah. But I still don't know if I want that to be representative of skating. Yeah, I ask because I want to make t-shirts and stuff. And I'm always looking for ideas or things that would represent skaters. So Wolfpack, I think, could work. Oh, somebody said Raven. Raven is a good one. The all-seeing eye. There's this, like, mystery and omnipresence of the Raven. The dragonfly, maybe? The hornet is pretty good. Hive mentality. Ooh, swarms. We need a hornet skate and we need a wolf pack skate next. The hornet skate will be like 300 people, all very good, wearing yellow and black. And the wolf pack will be like six alpha skaters, male, female, whatever. Six to 10? Yeah, I think that's a good pack size. So yeah, I guess this is my chance to say Merry Christmas, season's greetings. Have a fantastic, active holiday. Gyms are closed on Christmas Day, but the streets aren't. So, get your rip on. Get your rip on? I don't know. Get your skate on. Get your roll on. That's like roll on deodorant. Is there roll on deodorant anymore? Do people like having really wet armpits? I don't know. I hate it when people spray aerosol in the gym. Deciding what I'm going to breathe. How dare you? If you're that stinky, stay home or wear a wetsuit. Oh yeah, Merry Christmas. Have a great holiday.